What up, though, YouTube? Welcome to the first episode of Mr. Lot Mantras. This is going to be a different form of content than what I usually post on this channel, as I am, at, at least at this point, removing the visuals from the video and just having a short conversation with you about mantras, as the name suggests, about mantras that I've heard mantras that I live by, mantra, mantras that I either agree with or disagree with, or things that I am planning on adapting in my life. My goal is to make this more of a sit down conversation with you. Maybe this is a message that you might need to hear. Maybe this sparks an idea. Maybe this is a form of content that you can listen to before you get your day started or before you do something major or before you make a major mistake that I could talk about making in one of these. I have so many ideas about it. I just decided to plug in my microphone and get to talking about it. <laughs> so today's mantra is something that I live by. This is something that I actually implement in my life. Things are never as bad or as good as we usually make them up to be in our heads, they are somewhere in the middle. I'll say it again. Things are never as bad or as good as we make them up to be in our heads. They're usually somewhere in the middle. I love to use this mantra and, and rely on this mantra when it comes to high pressure events. Think about a job interview. Think about a major presentation that you have to give for work. Think about a major conversation that you have to have with someone. You have to remove the extremes from your head in order to do well, in order to perform well, in order to speak well, whatever you need to do. You have to remove those extremes from your head. I often have job interviews when I'm searching for a job with tech companies. As as a data engineer, I usually have to do some sort of technical assessment. And thanks to the internet, there are literally thousands of tech assessments out there that people have shared from interviews that they've had, making it both extremely helpful and extremely difficult for someone who's facing an interview to hone in on one and to study it and to actually see it in their interview. So whenever I have a technical interview and I know that I have an assessment coming up, I take a step back and I just think that no matter what I see online, no matter what type of assessment that I think I'm going to see, that I think I'm going to have, I can't allow myself to think that it's going to be exactly how I researched it online, that it's going to be the exact same questions that I saw online. It could be similar. It could be. Or it could be way off and on an entirely different subject. But if I allow my brain to try to guess, it'll literally become a tennis ball between my expectations and the unexpected. I never allow myself to get too extreme when it comes to my expectations of a high pressure event. I also use this at work. So let's say I just developed a program or finished a data pipeline or a piece of software that I have to explain in a retro, which is a meeting that basically describes the work that everyone has done in the recent sprint or the recent stretch of work. I never imagine me doing extremely blow it out the park well. Well, I take that back. I imagine myself doing well, but I don't 
try to guess the reactions or guess what questions or what pushback I'm going to receive from the people that I work with, from the managers, from the other engineers. I just go in and put my best foot forward and I just roll with it. I have a game plan in terms of how I'm going to perform, but my expectations of the actual performance are never I don't expect from the things that I can't control anything that's too high up or too low down. I just move. I just go in with my best foot forward and I make it happen. I think that this mantra is important for anyone who likes to imagine all outcomes. Someone who just can't get it out of their head that there are an infinite amount of possibilities in a specific situation. And when you remove this, when you remove those possibilities out of your head and you just accept the fact that your expectations of things are going to fall somewhere between the greatest outcome and the worst possible outcome, then it just allows you to have a broader net of acceptance over what actually will happen. I think that it's also important to realize that you have to be realistic about life. You have to understand that you don't have the ability to predict that many things in life. So why would you put that pressure on yourself to absorb all of the possibilities of and all of the outcomes of what you're trying to of what you're trying to accomplish? Why would you do that to yourself? I think that that probably drives your performance down. It's not that you can't do it. It's just that you're trying to predict exactly how the situation is going to turn out. And we as human beings, we, we aren't too good at doing that. Some of us claim to be able to predict the future and, and have psychic powers. But realistically speaking, most of us don't know how things are going to turn out verbatim. 100 percent exactly the way that that we can drum it up in our heads. Most of us don't aren't able to predict those things. There's going to be one thing that goes off or one thing that happens or one misstep or one miscue or one question that you didn't expect to have or one unexpected event or someone sneezes or someone blinks or someone does. There are just so many different variables that go into situations. And I think realistically speaking, we have to remove those outlier events. We have to remove those extremes and we have to just focus on the middle, focus on the general concept that the best and the worst are probably neither. Neither of those are probably going to happen. And what's more likely is a good combination of good results, bad results, good experiences, bad experiences, good feedback, bad feedback. And accepting that allows me at least to do my best, to perform my best, to understand my experience and to actually, actually experience it. Actually enjoy the process of whatever that thing is And to not add any unneeded pressure to finishing whatever that task is. So once again, guys, this is the first inaugural edition of Mr. Lot Mantras. And my goal here is to just have a sit down conversation with you. I don't plan on making them too long and I don't plan on adding a lot of visuals But I just want to have a talk with you about things that I live by or that I plan on adopting or that I disagree with. And to, as in my other videos, get a conversation going about self-improvement, about mindset and to hopefully share ideas. So if you enjoyed this video or if you enjoyed this audio content, rather, I encourage you to 
leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know if this resonates with you and subscribe to the channel because videos like this, whether it's audio only or whether it's a full on video are going to be coming more and more often as I increase my ability and as I develop more of a structure, more of a a theme for sharing my thoughts with you guys. So I'll leave this one here and I hope that you have a great day.